welcome to this workshop on data pipelines with Google PubSub. I'm Luke. Um, before we start, I'd just like to say, if you've got any questions throughout this workshop, feel free to post them in the Twitch chat, and I'll try and answer them as we go along. Um, so this is a workshop aimed at anyone who's kind of new to data processing stuff, and anyone who's never used Google PubSub before. Um, it's aimed to be for complete beginners, so as long as you've got a bit of programming knowledge, then you should be able to follow along. A um, bit on my personal background before I start, just who I am and why I'm giving this talk. Uh, so I'm a fourth year computer science student at the University of Manchester. I'm just finishing my last year of studies. And I also work on the side for a small tech company called BioRelate, which does kind of like data mining of medical literature. So we have a document set of 30 million uh, publications, and patents and things like that that we work with. And we have a pipeline that uses Google PubSub that we use to process these documents and create a search platform uh, for people trying to search through that literature. Um, so that's why I'm talking about this today, because um, I have some experience with that and I think it might be useful for some people. Um, so a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'm first going to try and motivate why Google PubSub is quite a useful thing to know about, then talk a bit about how it works, and try and go through some of the theory of like what it's doing. And then I'm going to show you some examples and then talk, briefly talk about auto scaling because one of the real benefits of using Google PubSub is it uh, works really well with a system like Kubernetes that allows auto scaling. And then I'll briefly talk about some of the alternatives that are, are available um, to Google PubSub. <coughs> so normally, <coughs> sorry. So normally when we're developing data processing pipelines, we need to carry out a number of different jobs or functions uh, on a given piece of data. Now, the old fashioned approach is to use a single monolithic program, which will take in our data, process it, and then spit it back out on the other end. However, using a single program with lots of the functions built in can have a few downsides. It can introduce high code complexity. It can be hard to scale individual functions. By that, I mean, if you've got one function that's particularly uh, computationally intensive, you want to kind of try and duplicate that function as far as possible so that that's not creating a bottleneck in the pipeline. But if you're doing that within a single program, it can become quite hard to do. Using a single program also reduces reusability. So if you have a certain function that you want to use somewhere else, if you've written it as an integrated part of a larger program, sometimes it can be harder to take that and apply it to a different pipeline. So instead, when developing data processing pipelines, we should try and break them down into separate functions that are as decoupled from each other as possible. However, this can introduce IO problems between the different functions. So if you've got one function running over here, another one over there, then you've got the problem of how do I get my data from one function into another? And there's various ways you can approach that problem. Today, we're going to talk about how we use Google PubSub to do that. So Google PubSub is kind of built around this publish subscribe model. So the core idea is a publisher creates a message that they want a, a subscriber to then receive. The message then gets sent to an intermediary from the publisher, and then the intermediary sends that message to a subscriber. Whenever we're talking about publisher or subscriber, we're talking about any sort of program or agent that's able to interact with Google PubSub. Now, the intermediary used by Google PubSub is called um, a topic. Um, if you see other versions of like publish subscribe models or other implementations, they might refer to them as buffers. But in Google PubSub, they're typically referred to as topics. Now, a publisher can post a message to any topic. And a topic acts as a buffer where you kind of store all of the messages that you're receiving. Now, the topics themselves don't send messages to subscribers. That's where subscriptions come in. So when you have a topic, you can then attach a subscription onto the topic. So when a subscriber subscribes to something, they are subscribing to the subscription, not to a topic. So each subscription then takes messages that a topic receives and forwards each message to exactly one subscriber. And you can attach multiple subscriptions onto a given topic. So to kind of show you how this looks, and um, we have like a nice diagram provided by Google here, where we're seeing a very simple setup with two topics in the middle, topic A and topic B. We have two publishers, publisher A and publisher B. And at the end, they want to get a message to subscriber X. 
So we're seeing publisher A, they're publishing their message, message one, they're putting it onto topic A. Then the subscription XA that's attached onto that topic is then reading in that message going, okay, I need to send that to one of my subscribers. Um, I have subscriber X, so I'm gonna send that message one onto our subscriber. And similarly, when publisher B sends their message, message two, that's going to topic B, which has a different subscription um, attached to it. And our subscriber is also subscribed to that subscription. So they're going to receive that message as well. So sometimes we might have multiple subscriptions attached onto a topic. And when this happens, if a publisher, so we've got publisher C here, if they're publishing a message to a topic which has multiple subscriptions on, then each of those subscriptions is going to take that copy of, take a copy of that message and send it to one of their subscribers. So this is kind of like if you're trying to branch off at a point in a pipeline or you want to take a message and send it to multiple agents, then you can create multiple subscriptions on the same topic to do that. So sometimes we'll have multiple subscribers on the same subscription. Now, the way Google PubSub subscriptions work is that they will send each message they receive to exactly one subscriber. So in this example, we're seeing we've got two publishers on the left. We're seeing a topic in the middle that has two subscriptions attached to it. And then we've got three subscribers at the end. So if we take the message A being sent by publisher one, our publisher one is putting that on topic on the topic in the middle. And then it's getting forwarded from there to both of its subscriptions. Now, if we look at subscription one, because that's where we have multiple subscribers, we can see that that's receiving messages A and B from publisher one and publisher two. And then that subscription is going to forward those to its subscribers, but it's going to send each message to only one subscriber. And there's no deterministic way with Google PubSub of knowing which message gets sent to which subscriber. Um, it generally tries to balance it out, but there's no guarantee. Um, in this case, A goes to subscriber two and B goes to subscriber one, but it may well be the case sometimes that both those messages might go to subscriber one or both of those messages might go to subscriber two. So another key feature of Google PubSub is that once a subscriber receives a message, it can send an acknowledgement back to the topic to say, oh, well, back to the subscription rather, to say, I have received this message and I have processed it correctly. So Google PubSub uses these acknowledgements and uses uh, timeouts alongside them to kind of check that a message it sent to a subscriber has been processed correctly. If it doesn't receive an acknowledgement by the time the timeout uh, finishes, then PubSub will try and send that message out to another subscriber. So this is a way of guaranteeing that every message that gets sent out from a subscription gets received by a subscriber and processed correctly. So why is this really useful? So Google PubSub provides quite an easy method for passing messages between different functions. Like once you've got Google Pubs up and, up and running, you only need a, uh, a few lines of code to really get this to work. The acknowledgement function as well also makes sure that every function in our pipeline gets carried out correctly for every single message because our message can get sent to a particular function. It can then process that piece of data and then it can send an acknowledgement back to say, oh, I've processed this correctly. No, there weren't any errors. So you can proceed I and mean, you don't have to send that message to another subscriber. Because if we were, say, running this function in, say, a Docker container and that crashed, say, halfway through processing the message, then this makes sure that PubSub knows that something's gone wrong. It's going to need to resend that message out to another subscriber. So it's also easy to set up additional subscriptions on some services. So if you have a topic where a lot of your data is going to at some point and you've got another subscription attached to that topic that's kind of like the continuation of your pipeline you might want to add another subscription for say logging purposes like if you want to log all of the messages as well and send them somewhere else for logging purposes or if you want to create a non-linear pipeline and it's also really beneficial for scaling reasons because you can have multiple instances of the same function um, on the same subscription so if you have a particularly intensive uh, function in your 
a pipeline and you want to duplicate that, um, then you need to make sure that each one of those duplicates is receiving uh, a different set of messages. And PubSub kind of makes sure that happens because it will only send each message to one subscriber. So going back to my work at Virally, I just want to use this as an example as to how we use this and how it can work. So we use a pipeline that annotates documents by a series of annotators, and each annotator has a very specific purpose. So for example, ChemSpot is quite computationally ex expensive, so it benefits quite well from the scaling methods. And it will find like mentions of chemicals in a certain document and kind of annotate those on the document so we can search for it later. So each of our annotators runs in a Docker container, and then each of those containers will act as both a publisher and a subscriber. So when we have our pipeline, we have a series of these annotators, and a PubSub topic sits between each annotator and the pipeline. Now we then put all of these Docker containers on top of a Kubernetes cluster, and one of the benefits of Kubernetes is you can automate the auto scaling quite easily. So Yeah, so Kubernetes can see how many messages are in each pub subtopic and it can scale kind of in reaction to a particular part. If a particular part of the pipeline has a big backlog behind it. So, for example, if the topic behind ChemSpot has a lot of messages stuck in it that haven't been processed yet, then Kubernetes can know, oh, I need more duplicates of ChemSpot because nothing's going through that bit very quickly. So, I'm going to spin up extra instances and then we can get more messages through. So when we do this at Biolate, we're able to process about 30 million documents in six hours. Um, we could theoretically do it in a few minutes if we really wanted to. Um, the reason we don't is because we kind of like to put a limit on how many uh, instances we're using, uh, like VM instances on Google Cloud, um, just because it's easier to keep a hold of everything. But in theory, you could do everything really quick using this kind of pipeline. Um, so just a quick diagram to show kind of what this looks like. So we have our different annotators. So we have like grammar and syntax an an analysis at the front. Uh, we have annotators for um, detecting specialized entities and then all for organization disambiguation stuff. So you don't really need to worry about what they do. But the key thing to know is we have each of these annotators carry out a very specialist function. And we kind of want to be able to duplicate them as easily as possible and have a method where if a message is going through a pipeline, it gets processed by each annotator exactly once. So that's why we use a pub sub topic between each annotator. And then there will be a subscription on that topic for um, the following annotator to then be subscribed to. So when a document comes in, so we have a topic right at the start as well. Uh, when a document comes in, it gets processed by the first annotator. It will then publish that document onto the topic that sits here. And then the subscription attached to here, which this annotator here will be subscribed to, that can pull the message from here, the document that's been analyzed so far. It can pull it into the specialized entity annotator and then process it some more. And then it will publish it onto the next topic and so on. And then that's how documents make their way through our pipeline. Um, so you can set up uh, Google PubSub uh, via Google's Cloud Console. I have some instructions here for doing that, but it's much easier if I just show you how it works. So it's very easy to do if you set up a Google Cloud project and then go to your project and go to PubSub. Then you can go to here. The first thing you would want to do is create a topic. So if we just create an example topic like so, we can then create topic and give it a second. Okay, and then you can see lots of different metrics for watching the topic there. And then we want to attach a subscription onto it. So I'm going to create a subscription. I'm just going to call it example again. And I need to select which topic I attach the subscription onto. And I'm going to go with our example one we just created. And we're going to go with the pool delivery type. Now, the way subscriptions work is they normally, normally a subscriber says, okay, I'm ready for some messages. I'm going to pull those down from the subscription. 
Um, the other, that's the pull method. The other approach is to use push delivery. And that's where the subscription goes, oh, I have messages, I'm gonna send them straight to subscribe. Generally for like, data pipelines, you want to use the pull method um, because the subscribers should be saying, okay, I am now ready to process some documents. So I'm now going to ask for the next document to process. So that's why we use the pull delivery type. You can also set a subscription expiration. So this will just shut down the subscription as it's been inactive for a long time. Um, but generally perceive that as default. And then we have the acknowledgement deadline. So if you're doing something quite computationally intensive, you want to make this a lot longer. Um, for this kind of demo, we're just going to leave it as 10. Um, generally at BioRelate, we have everything set to 600 seconds because we just need to make sure that if a timeout is reached, it's because something's actually gone wrong and not just one of our processing, uh, one of our annotators is being slow. So you can also specify how long you want messages to stay on the topic before they get removed if they're not um, being processed. So by default, it's seven days, which I think, yep, is the maximum, but we're gonna leave that as default and we're just gonna create that subscription. So usually you can just go with the default settings when you're setting up most topics and subscriptions with Google PubSub. So here we've now created the subscription and you can just see similarly as with topics you can see how many unacknowledged messages are sitting on that subscription and kind of how old uh, the oldest one is so now if we want to look at how we do this programmatically if we go to here um, actually I'll go back to the slides for a second first so we're going to talk a bit about how to do this programmatically next. So for this workshop, I'm using Python, but Google PubSub is supported in other languages. Unsurprisingly, Go is supported for Google PubSub. It also supports Java, Node.js, C Sharp, PHP, and Ruby. Um, but if you want to install the Python library, it's very easy to do. Just use pip install as with any other library, and then you want Google Cloud PubSub. Um, for doing all of this as well, you will want to make sure you have the Google Cloud SDK installed and you can just go to this link here and just install it. It's quite easy to do. So if you want to publish a message um, via Python, then first off you need to import the library and then we create a publisher object. So in Google PubSub in the Python client library, there's always a distinction between publisher and subscribers. Um, if you want something to do both, you have to create separate publisher and subscriber objects. For publishing, we use to call um, the publisher client function, and that will create a publisher object for us. Now, when we're referring to topics and subscriptions, we use this kind of path format, where we say projects, and then slash, and then the project ID. Now, bear in mind with project IDs, this is different to the name of your Google Cloud project. Every project has a unique ID associated with it. It's definitely caught me out on occasion where I've put the name of the project rather than the um, project ID in place, and then I've wondered why I'm having authentication problems. Um, so be be aware of that. And then put topics, and then the name of the topic you want to use. So to then create the topic, we then call publisher dot create topic, and then we say the name of the topic. So that's this full path we've just put here, and we just pass that in to the create topic function. If we then want to publish a message to our topic that we've just created. We then use the publisher object again, and we call dot publish, and we pass in the name of the topic we want to publish our message to, and then we pass a byte string that we want to publish. Now bear in mind, especially with Python, that you always have to pass in byte strings, you can't pass in normal strings, um, because PubSub is platform independent. When you're publishing this message, you don't know where it's going to. Um, like the receiving kind of program on the other end, might not be written in Python. So if you try and write, try and send a Python string, then it wouldn't know how to parse that, which is why we use byte strings in Google PubSub because that's the most platform independent way of sending data across. And you can also specify metadata like this. If you say the kind of name you want to use and then the value you want to specify alongside it. Um, typically at BioRelate, we don't use this kind of feature. Um, generally, if there's any sort of data we're trying to send along, 
we'll try and include that within the actual message we're sending. Now, subscribing to a message is slightly more complicated, but still not too bad. Um, so here we're creating a subscriber object. Works in a very similar way to the publisher object. Um, just call subscriber client, and that will create our subscriber object for us. We're creating the topic name for you to use further down as before. And then we're creating a subscription name. So in a similar way to the topic, we kind of say which project we're using and giving the project ID. Then we're saying slash subscriptions and then the name of the subscription we want to use. And then we can use the subscriber object to call create subscription and then pass the name of the subscription we want to create and which topic we want to attach it to. We then need to define a callback, um, which is going to be called every time a message is received. So this function basically has to take in kind of the message we're receiving from our subscription, do something with it, and then it should um, acknowledge that it's received the message. So here we just call passing it in as message, and then you can access the data attached to a message just by using dot data, and that will give you the data it's enclosed in it. And then we can acknowledge that we've received the message for Google PubSub um, by just calling dot .ac on that uh, message object. Then if you look further down, once we've defined our callback we want to call on each of our messages, we're then uh, using the subscriber.subscribe function and we're telling which subscription we want to subscribe to and which callback to use. So we're basically saying, listen to this subscription and whenever we receive a message from it, pass that message to the function I've just told you to use. Now this function then returns what we call a future object and I'll come on to more of that in a second. Um, so yeah, so the future object is kind of used because when a program subscribes to a subscription in Python, um, a thread is created to run in the background which passes messages to the callback. So if we go back to here, at this point when we call dot subscribe, then at that point a new thread is running in the background and this thread will continue running as normal. And then whenever a message is received, the callback function will be uh, run in the background thread that's just been created. Now, sometimes we might want to block the current thread um, just whilst we're doing stuff with the subscription. So we can do that by using the future object we've just created and calling dot result on that. We can also end our listening to the subscription just by using future.cancel. So with this method, this is using kind of like um, kind of a method where the subscriber is just going to listen constantly in the background and process things consistently. But sometimes it, there might be a case where we want to receive a number of given messages, a given number of messages, and kind of do that in the main thread. So the alternative approach we can take is we can subscribe as before, where we pass um, in the subscription path. So there is also this function at the top called subscription path, which just kind of kind of, which kind of just creates this long name for us by passing in the project ID and the subscription name. Um, but you don't have to worry about that too much for now. So if we then use the subscriber.pull function, we can then tell tell Google PubSub which subscription we want to pull from and how many messages we want to pull. So we're going to say a maximum of five messages and we're going to put those into our response which is just going to be a list of the messages we receive. Now this will then try and pull in this case five messages from the subscription um, and it will kind of use a timeout so if there aren't five messages on the subscription and then the timeout passes then it will just return however many it tried to get it managed to get from the subscription um, and then it will stop at five if there's more than five messages on there. So then here we're just looping through each message we've received. Um, so we're going to response, getting the list of received messages, and then we're just looping through each one and printing it out. Um, you can also get the message IDs or acknowledgement IDs from each message as well. And then you can use the subscriber.acknowledge method to acknowledge that way as well. So this is a different way of um, acknowledging messages as we used earlier as we did here but both work fine and it's up to you which one you want to do 
I personally prefer the first method just because it's a lot easier to do. Uh, so now I'm just going to show you a quick example just to say, uh, just to show how this works and kind of prove that it does really. Um, so if we go back to here, first I'm just going to show you topics and subscriptions. So here's some I created earlier, topics one, two, and three, and then matching subscription one, two, and three. So each of those uh, each of those subscriptions are attached to the corresponding uh, topic. So subscription one is on topic one, subscription two is on topic two, and so on. Um, so I created those earlier using this setup script. So you can see here, I first off created a publisher and a subscriber object, um, as I showed you how to do earlier. And then I've created the topic paths and subscription paths manually for each one. So Topic one, projects, and then this is the name of my project here, and then topics, and then topic one, and similarly for the other topics and subscriptions. And then I've just called create topic and create subscription for each one of those. So that was how I set these up, quite easy to do. And then I'm going to have our own little demo pipeline where I've got an ingress service, I've got two annotators doing very simple things, and then an egress service which is just going to print it all out at the end. So the ingress service is just going to take these four things, these four byte strings, and publish each one as a separate message. So it'll put those onto the first topic um, that we defined here. Then the next annotator, which has the subscription, which is subscribed to the subscription of the first topic, is going to then take each of those messages and then kind of do very simple, what was it doing? Oh yeah. And then it's just going to take each message and convert it to uppercase, and then it's going to pass it on to the next topic. And then the second annotator is going to take each of those messages and add a timestamp onto it, and then uh, pass it back on to the next part of the pipeline by putting it onto the next topic. And finally, our egress service is going to listen to the last subscription on the last topic, and then take all of those messages and just print them out. Um, so, if I now run this, hopefully this works. Ingress. And might take a second to do. Sometimes it can be a bit slow. So this is now run, and it will have hopefully put all four of these messages on our subscription on our first topic. So if we go back to here, we can use Google monitoring to kind of see how many messages we have on each of our topics and subscriptions. So if we go to monitoring and then dashboards, there we go. And we can go to cloud pub sub. So this one is an automatically created um, dashboard where we can see various things. Um, I'm gonna go to but I'm going to just go to this one I created earlier because it's a lot easier to show what's going on. Um, so we can see from when I was playing around before, we're seeing unacknowledged messages on this graph. Um, and we can see that when I was playing around before that, I've got some messages that have been put onto subscription free and the others were uh, empty. So at the moment, you might be wondering where the messages are on the first subscription. Sometimes this kind of monitoring tool, it can be very slow to update and a bit behind what's actually happening uh, on the actual topics and subscriptions. So sometimes just give it a bit and it will uh, catch up to what's actually going on. Uh, so we're going to leave that running for now and then we'll come back to that and see if that updates so we can see our subscriptions. So if we then go to the next annotator and if I just run this, right, run. So this should now be running and should be getting each of the messages it receives. So because we're using our future.result down here, we're kind of blocking this main thread so that we can process our messages in the background. So that's why this program will appear frozen, but it is running. Um, it's not complaining, so hopefully everything's running fine. So we can leave this one running and we're just going to go to the next annotator and run that as well. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And similarly, annotator two, it should be processing things in the background. And we're just going to run the last egress service as well and see if this all worked. Hopefully it did. Okay, so we haven't seen any messages come through yet, so we'll just give this a minute to see if they come through. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to talk a bit about authentication. So one of, the, one of the harder things about setting up this library is just sorting out the Google Cloud in, uh, authentication. So if you install the Google Cloud um, li Python library, then um, it should automatically use whatever local credentials you've set up. So you can set those up just by going to command line. If you've installed the Google Cloud um, SDK, then you can use two commands to set up. First, you can use gcloud auth login. If you run that, then, then Google will take you to a little window where you log in and click allow. And then you'll be authenticated with your account locally. And then you also want to set the kind of default application login. So this is basically um, the login that will be automatically used by any programs running on um, on this account, on this pro on, the, on this computer. Sorry. Um, so again, I'm just going to log in and click allow. And then that was how I set up the authentication first. Now, if we go back to here, I haven't seen, I'm not seeing any messages come through yet. So let's go back to our monitoring and just refresh this quickly. See if anything has appeared. Okay, so if we look at this, we can see on subscription one, we've got our four messages we posted earlier on, and that's now appeared in the graph. And those messages are just waiting to be processed by the next annotator, by, which would be annotator number one. Um, so they're just sitting there waiting to be acknowledged. Um, so I think I'll just leave this running in the background now and just talk a bit more. And then hopefully I'll come back at the end and we should see that it should have all gone through. So sometimes when you're testing things out and trying to develop, sometimes you don't want to use the actual live Google PubSub. Um, so luckily, Google provides a local PubSub emulator. So if you've installed the Google Cloud SDK, then you can just run this emulator locally. And it's just a very simple command, gcloud beta emulators pubsub start. And that will just start it running in your terminal. Um, to then actually use that local emulator, you then need to set a couple of um, environment variables. So you can do that automatically with uh, this command here, or you can set them manually. So the two ones to set are pubsub emulator host and just set that to localhost and then whichever port number it's using. And then you also need to export the pubsub project ID, which is just the ID for the project you're using. And that just tells any program you're running uh, when it loads the Python client library and it starts looking for um, Google pubsub stuff it will know to use the local emulator rather than to try and go to the actual Google PubSub uh, running instance. Um, so PubSub has a load of different uses. Um, I've talked mainly about using it for data pipelines, um, but it can be used generally for balancing workloads in network clusters, distributing event notifications, refreshing distributed caches, uh, logging for multiple systems. So that goes back to the logging idea I talked about earlier and data streaming from various processes or devices. So that's kind of a, just a quick summary list taken from Google's own website. Um, generally, you can be quite creative with Google PubSub. It can be used for quite a few different things. Um, like I used it at a hackathon a few months ago um, where we just needed a way to just post something from one computer and just and, um, and have a continuous integration server listen to that and just react accordingly. Um, so Google PubSub is quite nice. It's quite flexible. You can use it for lots of different things. And there's also a fair few alternatives to Google PubSub. If you want to kind of do it yourself without having to pay Google money, then you could use something like RabbitMQ. So this is a free open source piece of software. You can run it locally and kind of set it up within your network. And it offers lots of different models besides just publish, subscribe. Um, so that's quite a good alternative. 
There's also other kind of developed alternatives to Google PubSub. You've got Amazon Kinesis and Microsoft Event Hubs, which are basically Amazon and Microsoft's equivalents. And then you have Apache Kafka, which is a kind of another free open source alternative. Um, so I'm just going to quickly go back to our egress service and see if anything's happened there. So sometimes with Google PubSub, things can take a little while to be passed through and there can be a slight delay. Um, so if we try and refresh this, hopefully we'll see a bit more information. So we can see that our first graph has gone down, which means that our subscription number one that managed to take all of the messages and pass them on to the second annotator. So we know that onto the first annotator, sorry. So we know that all of the messages must have gone through this part of the pipeline. Um, we can see that subscription three has received lots of messages. Um, so we can presume that they are sitting on subscription three and this is waiting to hear from it on the egress service. And I've just realized what I did wrong. I put this onto the wrong subscription when I was playing around with this before. So if I now set that to subscription number three, which is the end of our pipeline, and then I'm just going to close that, and terminate that, and run it again. And here we can see each of the messages we've kind of put for our pipeline getting printed out, plus some others that I was playing around with earlier. Um, so you can see that the pipeline is working and our messages have made it through both the annotators and kind of got spat out at the end. Um, so if I go back to here, that everything, yep. So that concludes everything I was going to talk about. Um, let me know in the Twitch chat. I'll hang around for a bit if there's anything you want, any questions you want answering, um, I'll do my best to try and answer them. Um, thank you very much for listening.